Hello, my name is Deirdre Nocton. I am the Director of Midwifery in Portiunca University Hospital. Congratulations on the birth of your baby. I hope that you enjoyed your pregnancy and birthing experience with us. The following video is to help you to navigate through your postnatal journey. It contains useful information to help you in the first few days and weeks after giving birth. Hi, my name is Lisa. I am one of the CNMs on the maternity ward. I am briefly going to discuss your length of stay in hospital postnatally and what follow up you may require. Shortly after the delivery of your baby, you will be transferred to the postnatal ward. Here you will begin to get to know your baby. Your midwife will do daily checks on you and your newborn. They will support you feeding your baby and give you any medication such as pain relief. Your partner can come in from 9am. Please ask your midwife regarding visiting policies as these are continuously updated. On the postnatal ward, we aim to provide individualised care and education so you are prepared for the initial postnatal period. If you've had a normal vaginal delivery, you may be discharged on day two if your postnatal journey has been uncomplicated. However, you may need to stay longer if you've had a large blood loss for breastfeeding support or if your baby is in the special care baby unit. If you've had a section, you may be discharged between day three and day five, depending on how you are recovering. On discharge, your midwife will complete forms that will be sent to your public health nurse to inform them of your discharge. You will be followed up in the community by your public health nurse and will be due back to see your GP at two weeks and six weeks. It is your responsibility to book these appointments. If you've had a complicated birth, your obstetrician may make arrangements for you to come back to a gynae outpatient appointment at approximately six weeks. You will receive this appointment in the post if required. We look forward to looking after you and your baby. Hi, I'm Nuala, patient education midwife here in Portiuncla. Congratulations and well done on the birth of your baby. Whether this is your first baby or you have added to your family, having a new baby is a very special time, but it also brings about change and adjustment. Be kind to yourself and don't be afraid to ask for help from family and friends. Every woman bleeds vaginally after giving birth. The blood loss is called lochia. Bleeding is heavy and bright in the first two to three days. It will get lighter and darker in colour and usually stops at two to three weeks postpartum. If bleeding becomes very heavy or foul smelling, you need to speak to your GP or contact the maternity unit. Your uterus or womb contracts and shrinks back to its normal size within the first two weeks after having a baby. Your midwife will do a daily check on you and your baby. Perineal stitches are all dissolvable but become tighter as they heal. To maintain hygiene, promote healing and reduce risk of infection, wash the perineal area regularly. Wash hands and change pads frequently. After a cesarean section, the midwife will check your wound daily. The dressing on your wound will be removed prior to discharge. Keep the wound clean and dry. A cesarean section is a major abdominal surgery. Do not lift, pull or drag anything for six weeks post birth. You should check with your insurance company about when you can start driving again. We recommend all women take regular pain relief after birth. Be careful not to exceed the recommended amount. If your stitches or abdomen become very painful post discharge, inform your GP or public health nurse. You are very fertile for the next six weeks. Return to sexual activity whenever you feel ready. Discuss contraception with your GP at your six week checkup. We recommend taking one iron tablet every day for two weeks post birth. This is to replace iron stores lost during birth. Try to maintain a healthy diet and drink plenty of water. Try to rest when you can and don't be afraid to ask family and friends for help. Following discharge, if you are feeling unwell, have aches and pains, a sore throat, any foul smelling discharge or worsening pain, it is important to contact your GP or maternity unit as you may have an infection. Hi, I'm Caroline, CNM3 here in the maternity unit. After having your baby, your hands and feet can swell or become more swollen. This is normal and usually resolves in one to two weeks. Try to wear comfortable shoes and socks, avoid 
tight straps. Rest your feet, elevate it. A DVT is a cl blood clot that can form in your leg. If it travels to your lungs, it can be dangerous. Your risk of DVT is increased for six weeks postnatal. Your risk is also increased if you have had a caesarean section. If your risk of DVT is increased, you will be advised to wear anti-clotting stockings for six weeks postnatal. You may also be prescribed an anti-clotting injection for 10 days to six weeks after having your baby. Your midwife will instruct you on how to administer this and you will get a prescription on discharge. Symptoms of a DVT are pain in the calf or thigh, swelling, discoloration or hotness in any part of the leg. You may also feel shortness of breath or have chest pain. If you develop any of these symptoms, it is important you contact the maternity unit immediately. Hi there, my name is Michelle and I'm a midwife at Port Yonkla. Congratulations on your baby. Having a baby is an exciting and exhausting life-changing experience. It can be daunting and overwhelming. Baby blues are very common and normal and they begin around day three. They're usually due to changes in hormones. You may feel more tearful and emotional than normal. You can feel helpless, isolated and lonely. These feelings can feel unpleasant, but fortunately they are short-lived and should last one to two weeks. You may be more at risk for feeling sad after you've had your baby if you felt down or depressed during or before your pregnancy. 10 to 15% of new mums can have postnatal depression. It can last months or years if left untreated. Your partner, family and friends may notice before you do. It's important to recognize your symptoms along with feeling sad, anxious and alone. You may feel irritable and angry. You may notice a loss in appetite, worried and feeling rejected. You may also experience a feeling of only you can care for your baby and you could end up pushing people away, including your partner. Some mums may experience panic attacks and these are just some of the symptoms. Every mum is different and may experience different feelings and symptoms. The most important thing you can do is look for help, not to be afraid to look for help. There is many resources online, but talking will help. Talk to your partner, a family member, or a friend. Your public health nurse and GP are there to help. Remember to enjoy your baby. So now I'm going to take you through the eight signs and symptoms and what to look out for. If one breast is, is significantly bigger than the other, if one breast drops lower than the other, so your nipples are not aligned, what we're looking on the nipple area is any inverted nipple, any discoloration around the nipple area, any fluid or blood coming from the nipple. Our obvious ones are our lumps, okay? So that we've lumps on the breast. Your main ones are your lumps. Um, any dimpling of the nipple area, any puckering of the skin. And then on our rashes, you're looking out for, it's like a pinprick mark, okay? So you can imagine a red pen dotted around the under, under part of your arm here. And um, you're looking out for like an orange peel. It feels like an orange peel rash also. You can imagine when you get your sore throat, your glands are sticking out. And underneath the armpit, if there's any swelling of the gland at all, that is also a sign of breast cancer. To finish this presentation, please take a moment to watch this clip on how to perform a self-examination. Breast carcinoma, or breast cancer, is the most commonly occurring cancer in middle-aged women. The breasts are specialized accessory glands of the skin, consisting of ducts embedded in fatty tissue. Breast cancer can arise in the duct system anywhere from the nipple to the terminal lobule. Periodic breast self-exams are essential for early identification and treatment. The breast self-exam should be done regularly every month immediately following the menstrual cycle. Step 1. Visual Inspection Look for any changes in the skin over the breast, like redness, swelling or puckering, and nipple changes, like discharge, scaling, or indentation. Step 2. Tactile Inspection There are three ways to physically examine the breasts. The Circle Method Move the three middle fingers in a circular fashion starting from the outer edge of the breast towards the nipple. The line method. Move the three middle fingers starting from the underarm area down below the breast. Move slowly back upwards, repeating this until the entire breast is felt. Wedge method. 
Move the three middle fingers beginning at the outer edge towards the nipple. Repeat the procedure for every wedge until the entire breast is felt. Regardless of the method, the objective is to feel the entire breast and observe any abnormal changes. The breast should be soft and smooth to the touch. Pay special attention to check the underarm and upper chest areas. Hi, I am Sheila, one of the lactation consultants here at Portiuncula University Hospital. I am here to support you and ensure you have the confidence, knowledge and skills to breastfeed your baby successfully. Breastfeeding is one of the greatest gifts you can give your baby. Your breast milk protects your baby against many illnesses and conditions. It is designed to meet your baby's every need. Your breast milk contains essential enzymes, hormones and antibodies. These are vital for your baby's normal growth, development and good health. While breastfeeding is the most natural way to feed your baby, it is a skill that you and your baby need to learn together. Breastfeeding takes patience and practice in the early days, but with the right help and support, you can start breastfeeding and continue for as long as you want to. You will soon learn your baby's early hunger cues. Eyes fluttering, moving their hands to their mouth, making mouth movements, moving towards your breast or turning their head when you touch their cheek. Crying is a late sign of hunger. Try feeding when you notice your baby giving you these early signs. It will often be easier as you'll both be calmer and more relaxed. There are many ways that you can position your baby to breastfeed. Whichever way is most comfortable for you is best. Correct position and attachment is the most important thing for successful breastfeeding and prevents many problems. Therefore, it is worth practicing to get it right from the beginning. Bring your baby close, tummy to mummy, facing the breast directly with their nose level with your nipple. Try and keep your baby's head and body in a straight line. Avoid holding the back of your baby's head. Their neck and body can be supported with your forearm. Gently brush your baby's top lip with your nipple. This should help them open their mouth wide. When your baby's mouth is open wide, quickly bring your baby to your breast with your nipple aimed at the roof of their mouth. The wider their mouth is open, the deeper the latch should be. When they attach, your nipple and most of the areola should be deep within the baby's mouth at the soft palate. And your baby's chin should be pressed into your breast. Your baby's cheek will appear fuller and you will start to see your baby suck and swallow rhythmically. If you need to detach your baby and reattach to change position, place the clean finger in the corner of your baby's mouth between the gum and break the suction and release your nipple. Breast milk is designed perfectly for your baby. Feeding frequently in the early days and weeks helps make sure that your baby is getting enough milk and that your body is making the right amount of milk. It is common for newborns to feed at least eight to 12 times in a 24 hour period, including overnight. Feed your baby as often as they want. 
Offering both breasts at each feed ensures that your baby gets adequate milk volumes. The length of a breastfeed will be determined by your baby's interest and response. Offer the breast you finished with last on the feed following. Cluster feeding is normal. Newborns have periods where they may feed very frequently for a few hours and these feeds are often followed by longer periods of sleep. These cluster feedings will often settle quickly over a day or two. If your baby is sleepy, you may need to wake them to feed to ensure they're getting enough milk. Everyone's breastfeeding journey is different and we are here to help you and support you so that you can achieve your breastfeeding goals. Please ask your midwife for more information or contact us directly on 090Wash and sterilize bottles for first year of baby's life. To make bottles, boil one liter of freshly drawn tap water. Leave this to cool for 30 minutes. Clean surfaces well and wash your hands. Pour the cold boiled water into a sterilized bottle. Add the formula using the scoop provided and following the instructions. Thirty mils of water per scoop of powder, one ounce. Ensure the scoop of powder is a level scoop. Skew the teeth, put on the bottle's lid and roll to dissolve the powder. Cool the bottle under a cold tap. Check the temperature of the bottle on your wrist before you feed your baby. Throw away any feed not used after two hours. Your baby should increase bottle feeds gradually every day. At a week old, your baby should be taking three to four ounces or 90 to 120 mils of milk every three to four hours. Hi, my name is Macy and I'm a midwife here in Port Winkler Hospital. I'm going to show you how to bath your baby. Bath time is a chance for you and your baby to have fun, play and interact. A bath once or twice a week is enough to keep your baby clean. Firstly, make sure the room is warm. Gather everything you need before you start the bath. This includes towels, cotton wool, clean nappy and clothes. Fill the baby bath basin or sink until it has 8 to 10 centimetres of water in it. The water should be just high enough to cover your baby's tummy. Make sure the bath water is the right temperature, about 36 degrees Celsius. You can check this with your elbow. If it's too hot for your elbow, it's too hot for the baby. Undress the baby, leaving their nappy on and wrap them in a towel. Using the rugby hold, lift your baby over to the bath and clean their face and eyes using cotton balls, one for each eye. Hold your baby's head over the basin and wash their hair using only water.
dry your baby's head and then take off their nappy. Lift your baby into the water with one arm behind their shoulders and neck, holding their outside arm with your hand. Place your other hand under their bottom. Lower your baby slowly into the water so they do not feel as though they are falling. When their bottom is resting on the floor of the basin or bath, you can free that hand to wash them. Use your other hand to keep your baby's head out of the water. After you've bathed them, slip your free arm back under their bottom. Hold their legs with that arm as they will now be slippery. Then lift them out onto the towel. Pat them dry. Do not forget their skin folds and creases. Dress your baby. Empty the bath or sink. Changing your newborn's nappy is one of those things you'll be doing seven or eight times a day, so it's best to be organised from the start. Make sure you have everything you need ready and close to hand. Place your baby on a clean, soft, flat surface. Open the nappy and wipe away excess stools from the genital area with the corner of the nappy. Hold your baby by the ankles and lift up their bottom. Use soft cotton balls or a wet cloth to clean your baby. Clean around the umbilical cord area. For a girl, be sure to wipe from front to back. This will help minimise the spread of an infection. Swap a clean nappy for the dirty one. Use the tabs to see which way goes up. Avoid covering the umbilical cord as this can cause irritation. For a boy, keep his penis pointed down. Fasten the nappy at both sides with the tapes, making sure it's snug, but not so tight that it pinches the skin. Retape the soiled nappy around the contents, put it in a plastic bag and discard it in the bin. Dress your baby and wash your hands thoroughly. Babies wet their nappies several times a day. The number of wet nappies is a helpful sign of how much fluid the baby is taking in. Generally, a baby should have five to six wet nappies each day. This is a good indication that they're getting enough milk. Hi, I'm Amanda. I will be discussing a very important talk around safe sleep for your baby. Safe sleep practice is important to reduce and prevent the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. Babies have no concept of day or night, especially in the first few weeks of life, and tend to eat and sleep as part of their routine. Babies can sleep from 10 to 18 hours per day. As your baby gets older, their wakening periods increase and they will develop a passion of sleep. The parent's bedroom is the safest environment for a baby to sleep in during the first six months. Babies should sleep on a firm flat mattress in a cot. Keep the cot away from areas with drafts or radiators as babies cannot control their own body temperature. A comfortable temperature for a bedroom for a baby is between 16 and 18 degrees. Avoid having any stuffed animals or toys in the cot. Babies should sleep on their backs with their feet at the bottom of the cot and we recommend cellular blankets coming no further than the baby's chest, tucked loosely but securely. We do not recommend co-sleeping, however if your baby does sleep in your bed ensure they are on a hard flat surface, keeping pillows and adult bedding away from your baby. Never sleep in the bed with your baby if you have consumed alcohol or any drugs. 
Remember to check your baby often to ensure that they are sleeping safely and comfortably. Hi, my name is Paula. I am a senior paediatric physiotherapist working in the Port Yonkla University Hospital. In this video, we will briefly discuss tummy time, plagiocephaly and torticollis. You may notice a flat spot developing on the side of or back of your baby's head and this is known as plagiocephaly. This happens because your baby's head is soft and can easily change shape. Your baby might prefer sleeping with their head turned to one direction and you can reduce the incidence of flattening occurring by changing the baby's head position. Any head flattening should improve naturally as your baby gets older and the bones in their head gradually fuse together. Your baby's flattened head will not cause pressure on their brain or any developmental problems. If your baby has a mild case of plagiocephaly, they usually do not need to see a physiotherapist. The condition will usually improve if you follow the advice on the hse.ie website. Search for plagiocephaly or flat head and click the link flat head syndrome in babies. Only babies with serious cases of plagiocephaly are referred to a physiotherapist. One reason for plagiocephaly emerging is if your baby has a torticollis, that's when they tilt their head down to one side or avoid turning their head in one direction. Take your baby to see your public health nurse or GP as soon as possible if you notice they have these symptoms. With the help of physiotherapy, most babies with torticollis get better through position changes and stretching exercises. Depending on the age of your baby, it may take weeks or months to fully correct. Tummy time helps to strengthen your baby's head, neck and back muscles and helps reduce the incident of your baby developing a flat spot on their head. Your baby can begin tummy time from the day they are born. They can continue to do tummy time throughout their first year. More tips on how to do various forms of tummy time can be found on hse.ie and search for tummy time.
As a parent, your worst nightmare is finding your baby not breathing or blue. The following steps will show you how to administer CPR to a baby who is not breathing. Gently stimulate the baby by tapping or rubbing the baby's foot or gently squeezing the baby's hand. If the infant is unresponsive, call for help or call an ambulance dialing 999 or 112. Lay the baby on a flat surface and tilt the baby's head back into a neutral position. Open the mouth and look for any obstruction. If there is an obstruction, remove it. Check for breathing by looking for chest movement, listening or feeling breath on your ear. Do so for no longer than 10 seconds. If baby is not breathing, cover the baby's nose and mouth with your mouth and give five rescue breaths. Ensure there is a good seal and that you can see the chest rise with the breaths. Each breath should last one second in duration. If there are no signs of life from the infant, then you will need to begin chest compressions. Place the tips of two fingers on the lower half of the breastbone, just below the nipple line, and push down firmly and fast to a depth of four centimeters. Give 30 compressions and give two more breaths, followed by 30 compressions. Continue this sequence until the baby responds or until the ambulance arrives and somebody is available to continue infant CPR. 12, We sincerely hope that you will never be faced with this scenario, but this skill is an easy and effective tool that may potentially save an infant's life. If your child is choking, he may appear distressed. He may have a silent cough or cry. His face will be pale and his lips may be blue. If this happens, supporting your baby's head and neck with his head lower than the level of his chest, in between his shoulder blades with the heel of your hand, you need to hit him hard five times. Don't worry One, about hurting two, your baby. Three, you need four, to relieve five. this obstruction. Generally, back blows are enough to relieve the obstruction, but if your baby is still not breathing, you need to do five chest thrusts. This is done by using your two fingers in between the nipples, the lower half of his breastbone, going on an inward and upward motion to your baby's head. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to continue doing chest thrusts and back blows until the object comes out or your baby goes unresponsive. If your baby goes unresponsive, you need to follow the guidelines for infant CPR. If you see the object in your baby's mouth and it is easy to remove, remove it. However, never put your finger blindly into your baby's mouth as you could push the object further back or you could injure the inside of their mouth causing more problems. If your child has had a choking episode, they need to be followed up by a doctor.